nice to see you. Um, welcome back. I think, um, I think everybody on the call tonight participated with us um, the first session. So thank you for, for coming back. We're excited to see you and we're excited to move this process forward. I think we're going to have a couple people perhaps joining us um, maybe throughout the evening. So you might expect a few other faces to pop on um, throughout the night. Uh, just a few housekeeping items. Number one, just like last time, this is gonna be recorded so that we can capture all of the information in the large group session here. And um, as some of us have done, we've sort of changed our name in the, um, in your, in your little box there. If you go to the three dots at the top right, you can, uh, if you're so inclined, you can say what organization you're with or you know, if you're a board member, if you're a staff, whatever, however you wanna delineate your um, connection to read. Got that? Okay. So with that, I think we'll just go ahead and get started. I'd like to turn things over to uh, Melissa and the Concordia team. Good evening, and thank you so much. It's great to be back in this space with each and every one of you. I'm going to share my screen now, and um, we will walk through um, what we've learned. And we have some specific questions on what we'd like um, sorry, I can't do two things at once. My goodness, here we go. <laughs> um, we want to share what we've learned, and we would love to solicit and hear your feedback moving forward. But on behalf of the Concordia team, we would like to thank the Reed Foundation for Autism for carving out this important space um, to hold this very important conversation. So thank you. And this is all centered around um, the meaningful uh, development of inclusive housing. Um, so as partners with the Reed Foundation, here's a little bit about who we are and very quickly, um, we are a national award-winning architect and planning firm based in New Orleans, cue the music. Um, and Concordia is our one word name and mission. It means harmony and agreement among people and things. And this is a picture of our talented team. We are seasoned experts that work collaboratively and, and think holistically. There are a lot of us on today's call so it's my pleasure to acknowledge them. Um, we have Bobby, Zach, George, Natalie, Melanie, and Laura. Bobby, do you want to quickly say hello? She's the principal of our firm. Um, good evening, everybody. Again, thank you for being here. It's just such a pleasure. Um, I will just say that um, we are delighted. We are especially honored to be involved with you in a project that we consider to be incredibly important. And, um, and again, thank you. And we look forward to see what we learned tonight. And Zach, do you quickly want to say hello? Yes, of course. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Zach. I've been in Concordia for a few years now. And um, funny enough, now, now that I'm based in New Orleans, I, uh, I still do call New Jersey home and Hackensack is where my mother grew up. So I spent so much time there. Um, when I was a child, and you know, it's it's just wonderful to be able to be connected with with um, you know with Hackensack and with the Reed Foundation. And I want to echo everything Bobby said. I'm very excited to work with y'all tonight. Thank you, George. Hi, where are you? I'm here. Hello, hello. Um, yeah, I'm super excited. I'm from Louisiana, um, born and raised, and uh, but spent some some good years up in the Northeast, um, across the way in Manhattan. So. I'm very excited um, to continue this process and, and keep pushing this project forward in a really awesome way. Thank you. Natalie, hi. Hi, y'all. How's it going? Um, thank you for having me here today. Excited to see learn more about the Reed Foundation and um, hear all the great ideas. Thanks, Natalie. Melanie, where are you? Um, um, my name is Melanie. Um, I am also from New Orleans. Um, and I'm the business manager for Concordia, so I don't normally get to do fun things like this, but Melissa asked me to, to come on this meeting to help out. So I'm really excited to see, um, see what happens. Thank you. And last but not least, Laura. Hi, everyone. Uh, I've been with Concordia for over a year now, and I'm really excited to work on this project now with you all. 
Thank you. Thank you. And I'm I'm Melissa Lee, the director of planning and community engagement. And I, I say this all the time, but I believe it and I'm steeped in the certainty that anything is possible uh, when radical imagination is paired with action. And so now the last time we, we met, we asked you to imagine how we could raise the bar of possibilities so that adults on the spectrum can recognize that uh, diagnos diagnosis doesn't mean um, any sort of barrier to friends, to employment, to supportive communities or residents of their own. And you didn't disappoint. We, will, we were able to gather from your thoughtful and rich responses how we need to prioritize our approach to this project. And this evening we'll ask for your continued guidance and insight on how to further this creative process of co-design. So more on that shortly, but really quickly to ground us, um, tonight we are framing our conversation on pairing the elements of our collective imagination with action steps needed to advance this project. We've carved out time, excuse me, to discuss the project overview. So how, so where we've been and how do we get here? We will um, have interactive live polls not only to give you a little bit of energy boost um, at the end of the day, but really to take your temperature on your preferred best and highest uses for this proposed development. Um, we'll have some breakout rooms where we'll do a deep dive into some planning exercises. And then of course, we'll come back together for a report out and to talk about next steps. So quickly, um, our work in this initial phase of project development is divided into three goals. We've been charged with leading a transparent planning and engagement process to envision this inclusive housing, really that supports individuals of all abilities. So we are in the middle of that right now. Quickly, we'll move into, at the conclusion of this engagement, we'll move into the next step of developing design options that visually promote the goals of this project. And then we'll round out this phase of the, of, of the process with finalized program and design concepts that identify short, medium, and long-term capital investment improvements. So at Concordia, despite us having decades of experience designing adaptive community-centered buildings and really understanding the importance of co-design and weaving programming with aesthetics to really capture a dynamic site and what that should look like and the people that live there, this output of this work is impossible without your input. So we really thank you for your, your time tonight. Now that, now here's where we've been. Um, we've established that the vision for this project is um, an innovative, is to craft rather an innovative holistic approach to expand meaningful and inclusive housing really ground by four organizational values um, tied to the mission of the Reed Foundation for Autism. Uh, the first being learn, right? So we're interested in, in really um, doing a deep dive in the opportunities where development can promote a culture of inclusivity, provide open and vibrant spaces for people of all abilities to gather and to connect. Uh, the second value being live, right? Where are the opportunities um, to provide comfortable and convenient living um, that includes thoughtful design, um, and design that really simplifies life for anyone and everyone. And then work. Um, where are the opportunities that the building site can link workforce development to community development? And then lastly, thrive, right? We're interested in, in, in how we can promote and, and build vibrant environments that houses enrichment and wellness activities. Again, regardless of interest or ability, all can can come to relax and recharge. So we kicked off this engagement with you last month. We had two virtual meetings. One was held on the 11th of February and then the 18th of February. So in total, nearly 40 community stakeholders were in attendance. And we asked all of them to really envision um, about these opportunities that I just outlined. And by the way, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that we published written summaries of these meetings, including all of the raw data from your input. So these summaries sit with the Reed Foundation and should be available to you um, shortly, if not already. So overwhelmingly, uh, when we asked uh, you about opportun the opportunities you'd imagine supporting this culture of inclusivity 
and where vibrant spaces can in kind of encourage people to gather and connect, you prioritized such a thoughtful approach. And this really kind of centered um, around kind of a montage of, of what these photos represent. Um, you ranked highly the importance of organized social activities. Think bingo, think um, air hockey, uh, karaoke, uh, movie nights, ping pong, and etc. All of these activities that can activate a common space. You envision these activities um, happening in a multimedia or a music room or a cyber lounge or in a teaching kitchen. And you also noted that, you know, outdoor space is important um, as well to house these activities. And following suit, when asked about opportunities to think about comfortable and convenient living, uh, you prioritized this, a site potentially being located near uh, public transportation, um, having access to shuttle services, goods and services as well, um, being um, at cl close by or on site. And that site programming should include a concierge or resident advisor services. You talked about additional add-ons um, such as cleaning services, meal services, on-site pharmacy. And the building also should be smoke-free and have a state-of-the-art amenity such as keyless entry and have a large great room with a community table, dedicated quiet spaces and so forth. You get the picture. And when asked about the linkage between workforce development and community development, there was um, a prioritization of local in partnerships with local entities like the Main Street Alliance or the Chamber of Commerce. And it was also noted that these opportunities be tied to outreach and job training and job placement services. Um, and that this really is aligned to all individuals despite skill or ability. And you noted that ideally these, this type of programming should either happen on site or in, in close proximity. And then, and then you also noted kind of the ground floor retail opportunity was prime, right? Thinking about the introduction of coffee shops and ice cream shops and pharmacies and so forth. And then lastly, um, when promoting kind of a vibrant uh, community on site, you talked about an outdoor kitchen or a rooftop garden with seating, um, the idea of wayfinding signage or two-tone paint or um, ideas around design amenities that soothe and calm. And then really talked about inclusive spaces where lighting and sound could be controlled um, in spaces like a wellness center or um, a reading room or a music room. So that was a very quick overview of your contributions. And we really thank you for your time and energy. And you can see there is a lot of content that was, that was um, given for us to work on. So we would love to hear what piqued your interest or sparked the most enthusiasm from this quick debrief. So let's continue to, to iterate and let's begin uh, if we're ready with the interactive polls. All right, so some of you know the drill. So, but just to make sure that we're all on the same page, I'm gonna ask you a series of questions. There's three um, in which you're going to provide a response using an interactive poll on your cell phone. So here are the instructions. If you have your cell phone ready, pull it out, go to your text messages and open a new blank message. And as you can see on the screen, you're gonna text Concordia 447 in your text message. Is it, Melissa, is it 447 or 477? Excuse me, 477. Okay, just four checking. Seven seven. Yep, thank you. <laughs> Good catch, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then in, in the um, recipient, I'm sorry, in the uh, recipient box, rather, you're gonna type 22333. So the text message will be Concordia 477. The recipient box or the two line will be 233 and hit send. This will register you to the poll. And once you're successful, you should receive a confirmation text. Now, while you're setting yourself up, I wanna mention that if texting is not available to you, you have several options. You can go, um, 
to the website and I'm going to pull that up shortly and you can access the poll by using your desktop or laptop. Um, if that's if either your smartphone or laptop are not available or cooperating, you can just use the text box. We're going to keep this fun and easy and smooth. So I'll give you a moment to set up. Please ask for help. Any questions? Okay. Hopefully the silence is good. Okay, so if ready, the question, the first question is, and again, at the top here, you can see, you can go using your desktop or your laptop, you can go to pollev.com forward slash Concordia 477, and that'll register you just like uh, it would on your cell phone. But the first question is, based on what we talked about, the images that we showed, and when thinking about the common spaces, right, these spaces that will allow people to gather and connect and to relax and renew themselves, what would be your top three common spaces? What would you ideally like to see? What are the three things? Ooh, I love it. People are ready to go. Look at this. How wonderful. This is awesome. Okay, second, second place is kind of neck and neck here. Ooh, now we have the first place. This is so fun. <laughs> okay, it looks like things have quieted down. Oh, maybe not. I love this. Is there anything in the chat box? Okay, I don't That's see anything. anything. This is working. <laughs> Excellent. So it looks as if there's, wow, there's a tie, an even tie between the multi-purpose room, right, and the outdoor courtyard. Fantastic. Second choice, quiet space, of course, and then we have the community teaching kitchen. Wonderful. That's amazing. Okay, you ready for the next question? Have your cell phones, laptop, or chat box ready. When thinking about programming, amenities, and services, Right. If you're a resident of this development, what are your top three amenities or services that you would like to have? And you can obviously, oh, okay. Here we go. I love it. Security seems to be number one here. Oh, resident advisors, look at that. It's kind of inching its way forward. Wow, okay. This is fantastic. So it looks like security's number one, resident advisors number two, and a concierge. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow, I love it. Okay, well then, to edit that, security and resident advisors number one, concierge number two, and then, oh, look at this. Okay, well, this is gonna, I love this. This gives us a lot to, to ruminate on and to plan around. All right, it looks like this, this poll is quieted it down. Okay, last but not least. Now we wanna think, have you guys think a little broader here. So when thinking about where this de inclusive development will be, what is the most important when considering the site location? And here are all the options. I'm not going to read them to you. Okay. And again, you can select, you have three options that you can provide your input on. Top three options for site location. I love it. Still going. Save. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to hold my commentary. <laughs> Okay. 
I love it. So safe and walkable, absolutely. And then urban and proximity to public transportation. Fantastic, fantastic. Oh, I see this going a little bit. This is great. Fantastic. Thank you guys so very much. This is amazing. Okay, so we have a lot of work cut out for us, but we know that we want an urban environment, close proximity to public transportation, and that's safe and walkable for all the things that we know and love, right? Retail and much needed goods and services. This is fantastic. Thank you, everyone. And we have we're not going to stop there. So now it's 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 time to um, have some deep conversations just around your thing. Remember your the top three priorities that we agreed on, right? To really talk about how you see your vision coming to fruition um, for this project. Um, each of you have been assigned a breakout room. Um, in each breakout room, we're gonna spend about 45 minutes. There is a facilitator and a note taker. So that you'll be paired with a talented team that'll help walk you through a series of discussion points. Um, each discussion point has a prompt. Um, and then we just ask that you just um, participate with your full selves and share your heart's desires on what your vision is for these, uh, this development. And as we're preparing um, to set you up for the breakout rooms, are there any questions or comments Cool, so we're ready to go. Um, so just a uh, heads up for everybody, including um, the Concordia team, we're gonna do two breakout rooms with since we have the amount of people that we have. Um, so make sure you um, in your group, you cover both questions so that um, all questions are covered. Um, and you'll have note takers that'll be taking notes so nothing will get lost, lost through it. Um, and yeah, it should be really fun. Just bring uh, open heart, open voice open mind, everything open. Um, and we'll see you in about 45 minutes and I'll, I'll keep everybody posted with time and stuff. Um, so yeah, see y'all soon. You see a prompt right about now. Thank you, George. See you guys soon. All righty, I think that's everybody's back. We're all back. And I'm, sh I'm sure the other breakout room was like ours when we said we could use, you know, some more time to, to round out this conversation. But we're going to take advantage of the fact that we're all back together um, in one room. And we would love to spend maybe the next eight minutes or so um, with a report out. Um, and then we will end with um, a follow up um, of next steps. And then we have one final request from this group. Um, but I'd love to start with our other breakout room uh, led by Bobby. Could you give us a summary of your conversation? Sure, sure. Um, well, let's see. We, in terms of modeling the values, um, we talked a lot about how important it is for there to be transparency in this process and from the beginning and to share that information with anybody and everybody that could be involved in it. And also um, uh, we, we talked about the importance of focusing on what do we want to see and not what we don't want to see. Um, really, if you will, sort of glass half full and, and really by asking that question, what do we want to see, um, opening people's minds up to creativity and to good ideas and such. Um, so that was really important. Um, we did spend quite a bit of time um, thinking about location um, and, um, and really had some conversation about urban versus residential or something in between and um, the possibilities and the, and, and, opportunities in each of those, um, with each of those options. Um, and um, we, we talked again about how do we get buy-in from the surrounding community. Again, it is, it was about being open um, and um, creating a, an opportunity for people to um, have conducive interaction. 
Um, and also thinking about what does it mean to become a good neighbor, not just for the beginning, but uh, long-term sustainability, how to sustain uh, this living environment for the long haul. Um, let's see, so um, strategic partnerships, um, really what was uh, again sort of reiterated is that um, those strategic partnerships will be much more easy to identify once a city or a town um, is determined. Um, you know, it would really make a difference and for board members and other people to be able to bring their relationships to the table based on, you know, what town um, options there may be. Some people have relationships in some towns and not in others. Um, talked about uh, wh whichever town, making sure to reach out to the mayor of that town, and also um, real estate professionals. Um, some other specific um, relationships may be to, to talk to United Way, who has done some developments. Um, I threw out the possibility of Volunteers of America, just because we know that they're doing a lot of, uh, of development, residential development in Louisiana. Maybe they're doing something like that in New Jersey, I don't know. Um, and um, one of the things that, that came up was just really considering based on the location, um, just specific issues around parking and what that means in terms of being a good neighbor. Um, and towards the end of the conversation, we were talking about maybe some specific opportunities for the retail space and um, people at Reed uh, have been talking to um, Smile Biscotti, um, which is, uh, I can't remember if you all said that was somewhere out in Arizona, but um, parent of, of an autistic child uh, started that business, which has become very, very successful. And Reed is actually looking into potentially having a relationship with them. Um, and um, yeah, and thinking about coffee and greens from the vertical garden and such as, as possible um, opportunities for the retail space. So um, I captured a lot of notes and I know that uh, Melanie and um, and uh, Laura did or in as well. So I know we'll have a lot to share with everybody once we document everything. Thank you, Bobby. That was great. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, and our group certainly, um, it was a wonderful conversation. It was deeply rooted and, and grounded in, in the commitment and, and the values around um, serving the community and being a good community partner. Um, and that was just so wonderful and refreshing to hear. Um, we talked about activating the space. So when thinking about bringing this vision to fruition, what does this development look like? And we, with the commitment, right, the values around being a good community partner and then also wanting to um, be of service, we came up with, we kind of vacillated between different configurations and different scenarios, but kind of landed in, in um, middle ground, right, of a five-story max building, certainly needs to be mixed use. So the ground floor should be dedicated for um, commercial enterprise, but that also, the commercial enterprise also needs to be um, also of service. Um, it needs to be grounded in opportunities to help social entrepreneurs um, and, and first time business owners. So having a set aside potentially for um, pop up market or um, and having a being a pipeline for an Excel business accelerator program that would be mixed in with an anchor tenant. So at least a minimum of two commercial spaces at the minimum with residential units above no more than five, six stories. And we're looking at potentially a range of 50 to 60 apartments that would be flexible enough to attract any resident despite their ability, despite their interest, despite their skill set. So we're talking about one, two, three bedrooms. Three bedrooms would attract families. One bedroom might be a young adult and anyone in between. Um, and then we're really talking about then how to move that right towards um, 
making it happen through strategic partnerships. So we talked a lot about funding, right? How to bring this to fruition, the funding that is necessary and needed. And what are some of the, the challenges, right? Um, thinking about that. So um, we centered a lot of our work around who on the ground um, is in the know when it comes to site selection um, and um, commercial tenant leasing. Um, and thinking about um, how those opportunities could provide employment opportunities for residents who are artistic, as well as provide a greater community service. Um, and how potentially tax credits and state funding could support this work. And then we had just enough time to kind of eke out on the modeling community values. And it was a lot of what Bobby had reported out um, in, in her group. But one of the things that that we talked about was coupling, you know, high level of community service from start to finish, so that when people enter the building, um, they are met with high level of community service, and that the residents are active participants, active contributing participants within the surrounding community, and that in order to make that happen, there needs to be deep level of community engagement at every stage of this development that is tied to a clear and simple impact statement. So it was really rich. It was really wonderful. Um, and we really enjoyed our time together for sure. Chantal, did I miss anything? Jen, did Bobby miss anything? Okay, okay. And again, as you can see, we have been capturing notes um, we um, will take all of this data back and, and start prioritizing and funneling this into a strategy approach. But let's certainly, uh, we have um, about five minutes left in, in this, um, this time together. We quickly wanted to talk about next steps and then we have one request from you. Um, let me just share my screen very quickly. As far as the timeline, we touched upon this in the beginning. Um, we have had a series of uh, three community meetings, right? And we are now at the point where we're gonna take some time to digest all of, the, of this rich content that you've provided to us. And we'll be coming back to you um, later in the season um, with some final recommendations and, and next steps. Um, we don't have a date yet, but certainly stay tuned. And then, computer finally working. <laughs> um, and then we do have um, what we call an act after action review that we ask of you. And um, while I pull that link, Bobby, do you want to describe what an after action review is? And I'm gonna put the link in the chat box. Yes, I, I just did. I George just did, did yes. Just, uh, okay. okay, great. Um, an after action review is, is, again, really quickly, it's a tool that we've been using for 30 some odd years. Um, I learned about it from somebody who was special ops in the military. Um, and that this is a tool that, that is important to capture in the moment. Um, we wanna make sure that we are being responsive and that we continue to iterate and learn as we do this work and as we do this work with you. So it's very simple questions. We wanna find out what worked, um, what did you learn? What, um, were there any challenges and, and su some suggestions, um, should there be some recommendations moving forward? So it's a very simple form. It's important to capture this information in the moment because that's when this, your response is most, uh, I guess, most coherent and most appropriate given what we just did. So if you don't mind taking a couple of minutes to do that, it's really helpful. And the other thing that we do is we share that data back with everybody so that you are learning from each other and understanding each other's response to the work. And um, it's also a way to assure transparency and, um, and you know, our commitment to iterating this process as we go. Thank you, Bobby. That was perfect. So I would I would love to turn this back to Chantal to, to close us out. But on behalf of the Concordia team, we thank you so much for your time and your energy and your partnership. This is um, 
been a wonderful, wonderful evening thus far, and we look forward to the, the next time that, that we can come together, but certainly Chantal. Yeah, thank you, Melissa. I'll just, um, I'll just echo Melissa's sentiments. I know everyone on this call has a lot of um, priorities and projects and activities competing for your time. So the fact that you gave us as much of it tonight as you did is, uh, we're very grateful for that. And I know it will enrich the entire process. So we look forward to coming back to you in a few months um, with, um, with all of this consolidated in, in a format that, um, that we can all get excited about. So thank you. We will have some information on our website um, about the process. So you'll be hearing more from us. And um, again, really, really grateful. I think I speak on behalf of the entire team and the board um, when I say that uh, we appreciate your time. Thanks, Thank Melissa you. and Concordia team. It was great. Thank you. Thank Have you. Have a lovely evening, everybody. So yeah. nice Thank to you. see you again. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Good night. Thank Bye you. now. Good night.